what's going on with our food, what's going on with our water, what's going on with what they're trying to feed us. If you are doing nothing for your health in America, you are getting sicker. We have paleo, we have veganism, we have keto, we have gluten-free. What the fuck works? Animal protein, I think, was so villainized. I have to eat animal protein. I enjoy it, my body likes it, I crave it. The consumption of red meat has gone down drastically and rates of chronic illness have gone up. Our gut microbiome is this incredibly complex with trillions of different microorganisms and we thought that just kind of popping in a probiotic would change the whole game, right? And they're just giving them out like candy at a candy store. Hi guys, and welcome to another amazing episode of Biohack It. And this today is my special new friend who I fell in love with over social media, Michelle Shapiro. Thank you for doing this with me. Iman, the joy is mine, and I mean that wholeheartedly. I can't wait. So one of the things is I really hand select and hand pick every single guest who comes on the show. I look at their content. I see if I resonate with them. I dig a little deeper, and I really have to connect with the person, and I love authenticity, people who are humble, people who are who to be in service to others, and you check all those boxes. That's how I feel about you. That's how I feel about you. That's how I feel about you. Thank you so much. And I'm going to go into a little bit of your formal background. Sure. So to tell people how amazingly successful you are. So Michelle Shapiro is a registered dietitian, a certified functional nutritionist, and a lifestyle practitioner. A patient advocate born and raised in NYC. Woo-hoo. She's a New York girly. She believes that there's a world where you can you where you can use food as a healing agent for chronic issues, but you can also enjoy your damn life. <laughs> That's that on, it. Is that on the website? That yes, is on is. the website. And I mean it. I do mean it. You know what I love is you're letting people live freely without, you know, feeling scared of what they're putting in their bodies and how they're getting treated by it and giving them freedom. Absolutely. I think autonomy is freedom and being Mm -hmm. able to make decisions for yourself is the most important important part of the work that I do. And you specialize obviously in depression and anxiety, healing it through food. So the mind-body connection, the gut-mind connection, let's go into that. Absolutely, yeah. I really consider our brain and our gut as a bi-directional relationship, which means that if we have anxiety, the anxiety can be coming from any part of our Mm -hmm. gut, but really any part of our body that wants to communicate with us. So I think of Anxiety is being a physical condition as much as it is a mental condition. And when it comes to it being a physical condition, right, let's break that down a little bit. Like, what do you see symptoms of in people? Where are they normally coming from? Yeah, so there's a couple root causes that Mm -hmm. I would say are for anxiety, nutrient deficiencies, chronic inflammation. Um, There's, of course, a spiritual element of anxiety, which is um, absence of another feeling. So if people are suppressing a different emotion, it'll often show up as anxiety. So there's that's the emotional piece of anxiety. And then really anything that's kind of gone wrong in the body, and what I'm seeing a lot of recently, Iman, is histamine intolerance as being a driving root cause for anxiety as well. And has histamine intolerance really gone up the last three years? It sure has. Um, Really good question. So specifically, when I think of histamine intolerance, I think of histamine intolerance or mast cell activation syndrome as being two distinct conditions that have very similar symptoms. Um, Long COVID is really, in my opinion, a, a disorder of histamine intolerance or mast cell activation syndrome. So there's been a huge rise in it. And mm-hmm. this term, mass cultivation syndrome, was only invented 10 years ago. So right. it's not only that it has a rise in understanding, but a rise in prevalence, for sure. And I think knowing that it's only come up in the last 10 years and we've kind of coined it and started to understand it, we need to look at the history of what's been going on with us from a toxin overload perspective, from an environmental perspective, what's going on with our food, what's going on with our water, what's going on with what they're trying to feed us. Absolutely. I think we can think of our bodies and our health as kind of this bucket. And Mm -hmm. if it keeps getting overfilled, by the time it gets to mass cell activation syndrome or any histamine issues, it's when the bucket has been kicked, burned, and pounded down. What's your take on gluten? Because they say a lot, like, gluten is your enemy, right? And I want to hear what you think. It causes a lot of inflammation. So in Europe, you can eat gluten just for everybody listening. And it's not bad for you because it's not sprayed with glyphosate and pesticides and herbicides. Over here, it's very different. Yeah. So what is the role in your practice, gluten, you know, kind of playing with some people, even if they don't have a negative reaction to gluten from a gut sensitivity standpoint? Yeah, Um if we were having this conversation in Italy, and I really wish we were having this conversation in Italy, oh, by the girl, way. From your mouth to God's ears, we're <laughs> exactly. going to do an international podcast exactly. edition. We're, we're taking yeah. it, biohack it, international. Um, if it, 
I would say that if we were in Italy, I would be having a different conversation with you. Mm -hmm. As it stands here, almost all of my clients, a goal of ours is to get them off of consuming gluten. Um, it is not something that I'm I wish was the case, but it is truly the case. There's a total amount of inflammation or toxin exposure or amount of work that our liver can do. And when you kind of are over that amount, anything can really set you off. At baseline in America, we are almost always at max capacity inflammation, toxin exposure. So gluten can be actually quite a heavy hitter for people. So most of my clients, with the exclusion of those with restrictive eating disorders, that is a long-term goal of ours is to get them off of gluten. And if I have to ask you, between gluten, dairy, and seed oils, mm -hmm. what is wrecking our body the most? It's, and you have to rank that. I would say, I, you know, food is medicine is this phrase we hear all the time. I believe that our environment plus food plus everything is what composes our health. Gluten and seed oils, I'm going to put in a category of their own. Dairy, I think, is very misunderstood. I think dairy is something that people actually do have true intolerances to, um, and that is partly genetic. And I also believe that the way dairy is processed is a concern, of course. But in ways of inflammatory load, both gluten and seed oils have, I think, a greater impact. I don't believe either of them are the ultimate only root cause, but they you could, some can make a compelling argument that they have contributed to the disease rates overall. And are these statistics that I have on this true? 40 million adults, 18% of the population struggle with anxiety. Oh, that's not, yeah. And I would assume that people are not getting diagnosed. So I would assume people are more than that are even experiencing anxiety. There's probably 50 to 100 million Americans who are experiencing anxiety. And they're not even talking about it because they're so ashamed to bring that up because mental health is still such an issue in this country and we're not able to address the root cause or feel comfortable sharing about it. Absolutely. And I don't think people know what anxiety is. I don't think they know how to identify what it mm -hmm. is. They just know they don't feel well and that they feel scared. In your practice, what is the age range that you're treating in, in patients and what is the most common things coming up for yeah. you currently? Such a it's a really good question. I actually skew older generally. My clients are like fifty to seventy. Um I, I Built my practice in New York City, was working with a lot of executives, a lot of people in real estate to mm -hmm. start off. Now I've actually started having younger clients. But when I first started, when I was the youngest, I had the, <laughs> the older clientele. Um, it really depends on the group of people. But common threads to the clients that I work with is going to be anxiety, gut issues, and then people who want to lose weight but in a really loving way. And what does a typical protocol look like? Somebody walks into your practice. What is the first thing you start at or look at? Is it blood? Is it stool samples? Is it just a you know conversational intake? What is it? Yeah. So during a client's initial consultation, the first thing I'm going to do is do a timeline of their entire health. Okay. Because you wouldn't believe it, but even if someone was breastfed or if someone had a weird moment in childhood, those things can actually influence their current health. So I really want to understand what happened to understand what's happening. So that's the first thing that we actually do. I, of course, incorporate blood lab testing and any functional lab tests mm -hmm. we have. And then we are just really getting to know. And what I'm wanting to know is what are those foundations? of your health like how's your sleep how's your blood sugar regulation your nervous system how are those things and then i'm kind of while they're talking mm -hmm. mapping the different parts of their body and right. in my head i'm thinking oh there's anxiety what's going on with their liver what's going on with this part of their body and that's kind of those things are lighting up for me and i'm kind of creating that puzzle of someone's body and health i have to say it's so nice that as a functional dietitian you're like looking at someone's past and their traumas and what they've experienced through childhood and adolescence and maybe even their early 20s and 30s and 40s yeah. that's created them and made them who they are today because emotions play such a big role in chronic disease and what people are getting diagnosed with. And I think practitioners who isolate and just look at, oh, here's the liver and this is your gut and take this supplement and don't look at the emotional side of somebody, mm. they're missing a huge piece of that puzzle. So I want to hear more of that. Absolutely. You. Yeah. So functional nutrition was not intended to be, here's a GI map test and now take some supplements. That's actually, please. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> Girlfriend. Girl. I got you. I love this. Yeah. Thank you for coming on yeah. the show. Oh my God. Thank you for having me. Functional medicine and functional nutrition was intended to be a truly holistic approach that looks at how each of our organ systems mm -hmm. are connected, how the environment we live in, the relationships we have all influence each other and create this kind of um, environment in our body for which we can understand 
um, impacts the other parts of how we feel, basically. So that is the, the true heart of functional medicine is really holistic. Even the word root cause, I'm a little triggered by these mm -hmm. days because there's not really one root cause for anything. Everything that we do in our health impacts the rest of our health. Um, so yes, that's the most important part of functional medicine is that timeline and understanding what influences what in this person's body. We wouldn't have a podcast talking about optimizing women's health without talking about body bio. I use body bio every single day and their hero product is a necessity for everyone in my house. PC is a pure liposomal phospholipid complex that helps protect the 70 trillion cells in our body from aging, environmental stressors, and toxin exposure. This little guy is great for everyone, you, your husband, your kids, and even your pets. Our health truly starts with ourselves and PC gives them the support and maintenance they need. To learn more about Body Bio, head over to their website, www.bodybio.com and use the code BIOHACKIT for 20% off your first order. And if you've already purchased Body Bio and want to rebuy, use Iman at checkout for 15% off all your orders. So I'm going to tell you a little snippet and this backs into kind of what you're talking about right now. So I'm big on plant medicine. I just came back from a retreat Beautiful. and I came back and all of a sudden one side of my face, I don't ever break out, but I was having really bad acne on the mm. right side of my face. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? So I'm like, it's my hormones. It's this, it's that. I flew into New York and I went into an acupuncture appointment. I've been on the go for three weeks. First time I've slowed down in over like three weeks a month and I came back from the retreat a month ago and I went straight into work. And I come back and I do this acupuncture appointment and it comes to me at the end of the appointment. This is not just hormonal linked to your liver and your gut. This is because you're still purging out of your liver because mm -hmm. you dealt with so much family stuff. You released this ceremony wow. and you are not acknowledging that. Absolutely. And I just told Jacqueline on our walk over here, I'm like, Jacqueline, my acne started going away. It's because I acknowledged the fact that what I went through during that ceremony and my liver is having an issue, but liver is where anger is stored. Exactly. Yeah. So my childhood trauma was playing an active part in me clearing that out. And it was showing on my face and I was like, it's my gut, I, but I, I'm going to the bathroom regularly. Like what is going on? But as soon as I acknowledged that, my body was like, okay, we got this. Because your liver is literally releasing and pouring out toxins mm -hmm. from that release that is then your body has to recirculate and is showing up on your skin. I mean, that's absolutely what could be happening. Yeah. I also really, if you think about science in general, we think about TCM versus Ayurveda mm -hmm. and versus modern medicine. TCM and Ayurveda, which are practices that can date back maybe 10,000 years, um, depending on what historians looking at it, they're really looking at the body as it exists, not only within itself, but in the environment and the emotional and energetic environment, it's just better science, to be honest with you, versus modern medicine, which is, I don't know, 100 years old or something like that. Right. It's a baby science yes. comparatively. And we love the benefits of modern medicine and thank goodness for the advances mm -hmm. in modern medicine. But historically, science has always incorporated the energetic and, and spiritual self. I mean, that's it's known to be physical it's it's our mental and physical health has no difference it's all one and we're one person and that is exactly why i started biohack it so when i started the podcast and people are like oh you're talking about biohacking but you're talking about relationships and you're talking about women optimizing their mm -hmm. finances and making better decisions in life or spirituality or plant medicine i'm like yes because when you're biohacking yourself it's your emotional physical and your mental body it's all of it together so you can't be working on your gut and not dealing with your emotions exactly i mean literally our the way that our gut will interpret how to digest something is going to start with our vision mm -hmm. it starts when we smell food it starts when we see a threat our body will divert resources and say don't digest now we have to run from this animal or something like that right. so every part of our senses and our lived experience impacts every single one of our organ functions I want to talk to you and ask you, what do you think? Detoxing and parasite work or mm -hmm. getting your cells healthy first? Like, which route do you take with patients? Oh, have to get your cells healthy first. Okay. Um, I actually have to do a whole other thing, which is really fascinating because I'm having a lot of clients who have mast cell activation syndrome or these histamine issues, we'll call them. Yes. So doing a parasite cleanse without having healthy cells and without having a really stable body, can the cleanse itself can actually cause massive medical issues, really untreatable otherwise medical yeah. issues. So I always tell people, you have to know what your nutrient levels are. Is your liver prepared for detox? So do you have the vitamins and minerals for detox? Do your cells have the nutrients they need? How's your mitochondria? Because basically, if you go on a parasite cleanse or a kill protocol in any way, 
you could just be kind of pouring toxins out again and then recirculating them. It's actually quite dangerous. What then also happens is if you're recirculating those toxins, your body will mount a histamine response on those. And then you have symptoms from the cure and the cure cannot be worse than the disease itself. We were just talking about a great brand and product that I love and I know you love too, Body Bio and their oh, PC. Amazing. So how does that play into your practice? Like, do you put people on it? What's your take on it? We're yeah, and our mutual fan. friend and colleague, Dr. John, yes. talks about this all the time that I absolutely use Body Bio too. I will tell you, I probably work with clients who are too sensitive for Body Bio. Mm-hmm. Then I'll work on, you know, the the, phos- the phosphorylated fats with yeah. them and lipids. And then we might go into something like a mold or a detox. But it's wow. a step in the process, and and it's really, really important because our cellular health is so integral to our ability to detoxify and our ability to, I don't know, like do anything do in anything. our lives. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. The more I'm getting into this space and getting to meet more people, so I'm yeah. realizing they're kind of almost like two schools of thought. They're the people who get straight into like, let's do the parasite work. Obviously, open up drainage pathways, but they're going straight into the parasite work and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then it's yourself and John and this whole community that I've met, uh, Jonathan Rosenbaum, Christine Judrick, that they're basically saying like, no, fix your cellular health first. Your cells have to be able to handle what's going to come out. Exactly. And then from there, they're like, let's move to detox and then mitochondrial function. And then they do the parasite work right at the end. Yeah, you, I would absolutely agree with that pathway. And I would also say, again, it's can your cells handle it? And can you handle the symptoms of it? If you are doing these mm-hmm. protocols, cleanses, kill protocols, like for molds, for parasites, and you are consistently feeling worse, it's not a Herx reaction. You are just getting worse. So it is really important that your entire body environment can support a detox before attempting one. I'm going to ask you another fact and statistic that I looked up and you tell me. Today, 57% of the calories American adults consume come from the ultra processed foods. What effect do these foods have on our bodies? Like, is that fact true? Is that real? You think from what you're seeing in your practice in the studies? And how is that affecting people's mental health? Yeah, I think it's affecting people's mental and physical health in ways that we didn't even anticipate. We're kind of in a big experiment to see what would happen if we poured a bunch of toxins into the environment. What would happen if we kind of poisoned the food supply? How would that impact people? What's I feel the result? Like, I feel like I'm in an episode of The Hunger Games these oh. days. It's the rival of the freaking fittest. Like, exactly. that's where I feel like we are. Exactly. I feel like the world is testing us, and they don't care about us. And it's like, you know, survive or die. That's it. Exactly. And then the more – the thing that upsets me the most about this is that – I don't know if you know this, Iman, but even us talking about the fact that there are processed foods is now not allowed online from a kind of the lens of triggering Mm -hmm. or body positivity. And we'll talk, of of course, about that. But yeah, that we we now have to be sick and we're not even allowed to talk Talk about about that we're sick because then it's 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 like we have to live in the hallucination with other people. But. You know, and this is what really, really bothers me. So I have a lot of young people who follow me on social media and stuff as well, right? And the big reason I started Biohack, it was to empower women to make better choices, to make better decisions and be accountable. I'm tired of the fluffy bullshit you see on other people's podcasts. I want women to heal and feel empowered and do women are powerful, powerful creatures. Like we can accomplish anything. And too many times we're shut down and shunned and why should we not be taking the best decisions for our life? Why should we not be having controversial conversations? Why are those reserved for men? Yeah, and they are men are kind of allowed to say whatever they want. Oh, and, like, and then God forbid we say it. Yeah, and exactly. it's like, you're dominating, you have too much masculine energy, and it's like, no, I'm just doing what's right by me, and I'm yeah. also able to go between my masculine and my feminine. Why can't I be both? I have to tell you something, by the way, related to your story before. Tell me. I have a new amazing practitioner on my team and she works a lot with polarity complexes, which is the divine masculine and the divine feminine. Sweet. And she says very she said about a client recently and I I learned from her that one side of your face like you having it only on one side of your face has to do with the fact and I I don't want to misquote which side of the face is which that having that reaction on one side of your face has to do with whether it's the divine masculine or divine feminine. You I have that was so cool. to text her after this and find <laughs> out for I me. I, I, of course because I Because yeah, I need to Nina have Nina Passaro, unbelievable practitioner on my team. Uh, amazing. Yes. I dealt with so much family stuff this trip. I literally am telling you, I had like acne breaking. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? When I went into acupuncture, boom, the light went on. When I came out of acupuncture, I'm like, mm. oh, 
that's what's been going on with my face. Why am I always trying to be scientific? Why am I not being able to fall and drop into my body? Absolutely. Because we're taught not to. Because we're exactly. taught not to trust ourselves. Exactly. And I, I don't feel any healing happens truly without understanding ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I also feel very strongly that, again, we are being suppressed to believe what other people are saying. I have clients coming to me all the time and they're like, Michelle, what do you think about this supplement? I'm like, I don't really think about supplements. How do you feel? If people are looking to what interventions mm -hmm. I should put into place or where should I start, just inventory yourself. What am I feeling? And then you can match up with the right companies and the right supplements. But it's so much more important to know where you're at and who you are, right. honestly. The protocols I have in my practice, Iman, differ based on people's personalities. It of differs course. based on people's souls. It has nothing to do with like everyone who has B12 insufficiency is going to have this exact mm -hmm. supplement. It has to do with who, how are they receiving that information able to integrate it? And also people move at different paces, right? You can give, you can have one client who's like, you can give me 20 supplements a day. I'm ready. I'm in it. I can handle it. Yeah. You might have somebody who's like, this is overwhelming for me. This is way too much information. I can't go at the pace you want to put me on. So I might need a six month healing container versus yeah. a two month healing container. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's even funny, but there are some clients who I might say, I want you to get off of gluten. And there are some clients who I might say, how do you feel when I say the word gluten? How does that make you feel inside of your body? And if the reaction is, oh my God, I can't handle it. If it's causing such an emotional reaction, it might not be time. And right. that's okay. You know, it, everything can wait for when the person feels ready. And that's beautiful because you're really tailoring the medicine and the practice to the individual. Right? Absolutely. Versus being like, here's your protocol, take it and figure it out. Yeah, there's a lot of dietitians who ask me for mentorship and they're always saying, where'd you learn all the protocols? I'm like, I don't have protocols, to be honest with you. Yes. It's really dependent on the person. Every single one of my clients is so, it's so individualized because they are so different. We're like humans, you know, we have all these different amazing parts of us. I wanted to ask you about minerals and the roles minerals play because you brought up some things early and I was like, wait, let me talk to her about minerals. Yeah. We have a lot of mineral deficiencies these days. How is that playing into anxiety and depression? Oh, my gosh. I and mean, it's health. one of the most – of course, we know our soil is so depleted in minerals as is. And minerals are very um, controversial also because people say, your body already has minerals. We already have minerals in the foods we eat. The question isn't, do the, do the foods have minerals already? Mm -hmm. It's, do we have enough, essentially? In times of stress – and whenever our body needs any sort of repair, we run through minerals, especially during times of anxiety. We utilize minerals. They're kind of like the spark plugs of our entire yeah. body. They are so integral in every single body function we have. Um, and I think that people really take that for granted. And I have a, a really dear friend, Amanda Montalvo. She's on Instagram as the Hormone Healing RD. Her whole practice is built on minerals. And her firmest belief is that fertility ties back to minerals more than pretty much any other um, – chemical component of our bodies. So I always tell people where you can and if you can, always eat regeneratively because Beautiful. regenerative farming is where the soil is still rich in minerals and it's not just about eating organic, but these mass farming practices that we've embodied and we're doing are killing us slowly because the soil doesn't have the minerals and we're bleeding the soil dry a bit. So regenerative farming is very, very different to organic farming. Absolutely. And people need to go a step further than organic even. A hundred percent. Because our foods don't have what they used to have back in the day. So our bodies are not getting the minerals that they need. Exactly. And I think the, the question is always, are we maintaining our health or mm -hmm. are we trying to gain health? And in almost every person's experience right now, we're trying to gain health. We have Correct. catching up we need to do. Yeah. So it's very likely we will need to replenish our minerals or, or vitamins. And I know this is also controversial where people are saying you don't need vitamin supplements you just eat it from food well you if we're getting from zero to 100 yeah. you are going to need a little bit more Correct. of a sledgehammer right yes. you're going to need a little bit more support than just the foods you're eating which will maintain you our dna hasn't evolved as quickly as we have evolved as a species so our dna is still hundreds and thousands of years old but around us these 5g towers our hectic lifestyles keeping up with social media stress anxiety boom 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 we haven't our dna hasn't evolved at that no. pace and so we can try to get things from food and this and the other but our we're living in a time that our body is constantly in chronic stress unless you move to a farm in the middle of nowhere and disconnect it's not, not for us it's, not, it's just not for us i know i so, wish though i, I wish that was if you are doing nothing for your health in America, you are getting sicker. At Absolutely. Baseline. Yeah, unfortunately. But I think there's, I want to say, 
there I feel there's so much hope and innovation mm-hmm. in what we're doing and and in what I've seen and people's capacity to heal. I I believe in us more than ever and I have more hope for us than I've ever had before too. What are some of your favorite favorite like I would say like biohacks kind of going on? What do you think really works? Cuz there's also so much noise in this biohacking space and women's bodies are different to men. So what do you think really works for women and what's working well for men? Yeah. Anything any biohacking tool you have that gives you insight into yourself is the most important mm-hmm. one. So like I first of all I have the aura ring. I love obsessed. it. I can't believe I, I forgot mine in Miami. It's, it's like you, you have to order another one. You're going to be on this so trip without annoying. it. It's like not even exactly. Yeah, I'm so, like shit. I I think the best biohacking tools either give you data about yourself and mm-hmm. intuition around yourself or they do something else which is that they mimic something that we need to be doing in nature. So like I like a grounding mat. I think those That's are really great. potent and powerful. What brand do you like that from? Because it's, again, I literally get from that website grounding mat. Like they have that. I'm going to look this up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're fantastic. Um, And they're like the most tested mm-hmm. also. Okay, amazing. Um, I don't know if that's. I found that their testing was very adequate. Uh, but I like anything that mimics what we would be doing. Like light therapies also are incredible. because Red light therapy? Yeah. Red think. light therapy. Or you can even get like vitamin D sun lights. Amazing. And those are incredible too. Anything that mimics what we should be living life as I think is is incredible because yeah. it's still working on our foundations of being a human when we're not acting like humans and I don't act like a human most of the time too so I have to <laughs> I have to go this reverse way you, you know exactly route. yeah exactly what about cold plunging for women I know it's amazing for men but cold plunging mm, for women you're asking the right question so I would say the total amount of stress that we have is what I would consider when introducing or medic types of stressors mm-hmm. good stressors for a lot of women their stress bucket is already overfilled and we're yeah. more prone to cortisol switches and yeah. and high, high cortisol in the morning. Um, I would not recommend cold plunging for those who are experiencing a lot of stress, mm-hmm. already working on other anxiety or panic disorders. And then for people who are experiencing, um, I don't know, just uh, not adequate health and or feeling like their heart rate isn't consistent, I would be I would be cautious around that. So with cold plunging, you know, we got a cold plunge at home. My husband loves it, uses it every day. Intuitively, it was so crazy. We got it. I used it for a little bit. And I said, I have so much going on in my life right now. And I know it mentally calms mm-hmm. me, but I don't think my body can handle this. Smart. And yeah. then I did a test. I have got my labs back recently. My cortisol was a little wonky. So intuitively, my body knew, listen, you got to take a break. You can go back to it. But right now, you're like, on go mode you've been working like four weeks in a row basically no breaks on the weekends it's not the right time to give yourself more stress you need to nurture yourself I I just completely agree with you I think of stress almost like climbing a mountain Mm -hmm. where it's like everything we do accumulates and it's good to go up the mountain it's good to stress our bodies out and then if you kind of it's a hundred day heat and you're on the mountain and you're sweating profusely and you're dehydrated you're going to get kicked down that mountain. So stress can be positive because it can get us up the mountain and it can do beautiful things mm-hmm. for us or it can kick us all the way down and uh, and really hurt us if we go over the amount, the total amount. Is have. it also true that women, when we cold plunge, our testosterone levels go up? And, you know, you get more testosterone in your body from it. And over time, if you're really aggressive with your cold plunging, you're like, I'm going to do three, five, ten minutes, whatever it is. Is that going to throw off your hormones long term? I, I don't know if I've seen studies for it, but mechanistically, it would make sense to me. Um, I think, again, cortisol going up from cortisol going up from it is pretty inevitable. Yes. Blood sugar going up from it is inevitable. Changes in testosterone might happen as a downstream effect. Mm-hmm. Yes, I can definitely see hormonal changes from someone cold plunging repeatedly if their body is not receptive to the stress. Remember, you have to be able to use the stress in a positive right. way. I also want to talk about diet culture. So we have paleo, we have veganism, we have keto, we have gluten-free. What the fuck works? Like, yeah. What do we do? I would say if like offhand someone asked me, because I'm, I'm not a diet culture fan, obviously. If someone asked me offhand what diet would you feel is mm-hmm. best, I'd probably say a paleo diet, to be honest with you, just like as a place to start. Any diet that is con- encouraging consumption of whole and real foods from their source feels like the right direction for me. Anything that goes towards lab-made foods is going to be the wrong direction, right. in my opinion. I'm somebody who grew up eating, you know, I'm Pakistani, so we grew up in a culture where we eat a lot of meat, you Beautiful. know? Yeah. I crave it. It's something that I love. And so anytime I try to eat, I eat a lot of vegetables too, but like I cannot eat like I have to eat animal protein. I enjoy it. My body likes it. I crave it. So when people are like, oh, animal you know, protein is bad for you, I'm like, no, my body actually needs it. 
A hundred percent. Yeah. Animal protein, I think, was so villainized. Um, and we also were kind of part of this big epidemiological mm-hmm. study also because the consumption of red meat has gone down drastically and rates of chronic illness have gone up. Mm-hmm. Now, I can't say if that's because we were introducing more processed foods to replace meat, which is likely. Yeah. Um, we were introducing more omega-6 laden foods to replace mm-hmm. meat. But meat is is a, is a biohack in and of itself. It's one of the most nutrient. It is probably the most nutrient dense food that exists. Obviously, you all know I'm a biohacking fanatic and I absolutely love peptides. So you can only understand how excited I was when I discovered a skincare brand that works, that uses peptides. That is OneSkin. OneSkin uses the amazing OS1 peptide. OS1 works by actually switching off the senescent cells that drive the aging of your skin. Scientifically proven to give you biologically younger skin with long-lasting improvements in firmness, elasticity, reduction of fine lines and wrinkles, and a more youthful complexion. You can learn more about the OS1 peptide at oneskin.co and use my code BIOHACKIT for 15% off your purchase. Like how much protein should a woman be consuming? Because, you know, we're protein deficient these days. Absolutely. And I know you have a great friend who talks about protein all the time. We have to talk about Dr. Gabrielle Lyon, of course. Yeah, so she and researchers have kind of come to this really Mm -hmm. grand scientific conclusion that the the number there's a number it's one gram per pound of ideal body weight so if you're already at your ideal body weight and you are 150 pounds let's say you would consume 150 grams of protein per day um i would say it's hard for people to do that and get that amount of protein in so especially because people can have digestive issues that make it hard to digest protein so i would say working on your digestive fire and capacity is really important before that but um that is the That's the number we've come up with, and I think it varies from person to person, but most of us are actually under eating protein, uh, which is not the common, especially women, because I don't know why protein seems to be only for the boys. I don't know. We don't need to make hormones and neurotransmitters, just the men do. Yeah, it's just wild to me. What do you feel about protein shakes? I'm cool on protein shakes. I would say, like for myself, I probably have to have one protein shake a day because- I'm not going to get my protein needs otherwise, right? Yeah, so I use whey protein, like just a plain whey protein. I'm doing, yeah, and what about grass? It has to be grass-fed, grass-finished ideally. Let's talk about what do you take, what's your take on that? So whey protein's interesting because the components of it that concern me about it being Mm grass-fed are removed in the process. So I'm not as concerned about whey protein specifically being grass-fed, but the meat I consume, I'm very concerned with it, yeah. I wanted to also ask you, what do you feel about, and what's what's your thought on this? Because you might see this in your practice a lot. People are being over-prescribed antidepressants and mm-hmm. Valiums and Xanax. And they're just giving them out like candy at a candy store. What is the long-term side effects we're going to see from, especially in America, because it's more than anywhere else in the world, because I grew up in Europe and it wasn't like this, being over-prescribed, yeah. over-the-counter solutions rather than getting to the root cause. I'm, I'm really sensitive to people who are dealing with any sort of mental health struggles because they are suffering and there's a time and a place for medications for those people. Um, they're not, there's not a time and a place for those medications for all people, though. Sometimes um, it can be explored in a more functional setting. When it becomes life-threatening and medication's necessary, medication's necessary. That's different, yeah. Long-term use of these medications can alter our hormones and can alter our serotonin capacity, can alter our minerals, vitamins, um, and organ capacity as well. Um, it really depends on the medication and what the function is and where it acts on. But I, I do often see clients on these medications with very wonky um, electrolyte numbers, kidney numbers in their labs uh, because it's the, wherever the primary site of detox is for the drug. So is this correct that one of the things I'm hearing is that if you have or you think you have, because some people don't even know, having anxiety or depression to take a deeper dive into their health and look in their minerals and look at their gut and look at their vitamin deficiencies to be like, what is maybe something that's causing it? Absolutely. Anxiety specifically is known to be a diagnosis. I consider anxiety a symptom, and this is a controversial opinion. I think of anxiety like the alarm system in our body. So when something's going on on Mm -hmm. in our body, our brain needs to be notified. So it'll send off signals to Mm -hmm. our brain, basically. Oh my gosh, we're going to die. Something terrible is happening. So I I think what we want to do with these medications oftentimes is shut off the signal of anxiety, but then we can't learn from the wisdom of anxiety. And there's so much to learn from anxiety. To the point where now if I have anxiety, I get a little excited because I'm like, oh, I have a little insight, right? A little <laughs> a intuition. Look exactly. at it. Yeah. It feels like I, I it's like, I'm oh, in t- yeah. 
you thought you were going to be able to get away without sleeping and just working all night. Like, yeah, you're going to you're going to yeah. get it now, you know, and I, it's that communication between my mind and body. I will say this in the functional treatment of anxiety. Mm -hmm. I see a mistake that a lot of practitioners are making, which is not helping clients with symptoms while they're exploring the root cause of their anxiety. You should not be suffering while you're exploring the root cause. There are so many incredible herbs and supplements that can support our anxiety, grounding, talking with people. There's so much we can do in the meantime while we're finding out what's going on under the hood. I want to also talk to you about food shaming. We are living mm -hmm. in a society where we label food as good and bad, and that can cause a lot of people anxiety. Yeah, right? Absolutely. You're like, oh my God, I'm not eating clean. I'm not eating this. So there's so much information out there. People can get overwhelmed. And I'm going to tell you a little kind of story. And this Please. is where I think the health and wellness community also needs to do a better job at how they communicate with each other. So I remember I posted a reel um, a couple of weeks ago about I went out for a team lunch. I don't have gluten sensitivity, but I understand what goes on with gluten. Sure. But, you know, I don't have, I don't suffer from like, I'm not having like, any mental health issues at the moment. So I'm like, okay, I'm good. So I went out for a team lunch and I said, oh, I'm going to have a big bowl of pasta because I feel like having that. And I put up this reel talking about, you know, taking butyrate after a really big meal because they love the butyrate from Body Bio. Exactly. Love. Yep. So I put up a reel talking about how butyrate doesn't spike. It helps, you know, you not spike your insulin levels. It's amazing for you. Sugar spiking, all of that stuff. Some woman goes ham in the comments talking about how I'm so terrible, telling people to have gluten and how dangerous that is. And I'm like, Linda, a, it's a free country. Keep scrolling if you don't like my content. But also, why are we food shaming? Why are we labeling food as good or bad? Why are we not just educating and building these healthy parameters for people so that the average person who's maybe not as knowledgeable doesn't get anxiety about putting food in their body and then is like, oh, I'm just not going to eat because I don't know what that's going to do to me. And the anxiety around food is going to create altered digestion and do and create a just a state of, right? I don't know, disease. You know, I think of disease as being disease, right? I also will say that there's a difference between food shaming and mm -hmm. people shaming. I love to shame food companies. You you would love it as well. It's our favorite Any thing. Any yeah. time of day. <laughs> exactly. There's a big difference between adding a moral equivalency onto a person and actually just speaking about right. the fact that gluten might not make you feel well. That's different than saying Iman is a bad person for eating gluten. And that's what we need to separate, the morality of food from the science of food. And when we can do that, we won't be fighting online anymore. What are some of your tips to just enjoy your damn life, Michelle? Give it to me. I think the most important thing is, and this is such a New York answer, but living authentically and knowing your things. And what I mean by that is if, let's say for myself, I also have a similar reaction with gluten, but what happens to me is I get no digestive issues from gluten. Exactly 24 hours after I eat gluten, I get existential dread. So I'll wake <laughs> up and I'll be like, What's life? You know, like yeah. a, like a 1990 stoner movie. Right. I'm like, what's up, man? Like, what's going what's on? What's happening? You know? Yeah, exactly. You're that's like, what shit. Happens. That's the gluten talking. Yeah, and it's, and I'm like, oh my god, was there freaking soy sauce in the spicy tuna roll? And I didn't realize. <laughs> like, that's like the exact conversation I have with myself. I know this about myself. So right. now that I know this pattern, if I want to take a dive and eat my spicy tuna roll, I'm gonna know that I am paying the consequences. So eat what what it means to live your damn life is doing what you know is gonna work for you or not. And, and owning the consequences. And finding that balance. Yes. Like, yeah. Finding that balance between, okay, if you go a little bit over here, reel yourself back in. And that is knowing your own body. And exactly. that's why we need to empower women to be educated and really not just rely on outside factors, but start getting to know what works for them intuitively, what's going on in their emotional health, what's going on with their childhood, what's going on with traumas, and then painting that full picture. Exactly. There is no health without self-knowing. And right. I truly believe that. And your take on prebiotics and probiotics. So it's really interesting because we have this understanding that our gut microbiome is this incredibly complex with trillions of different microorganisms. And we thought that just kind of popping in a probiotic would <laughs> change the whole game, right? We're now getting a little bit more specific about why would even taking a probiotic or why would doing something to alter our gut bacteria benefit our health? So that's where something like a postbiotic, like butyrate comes in. Yeah. We're starting to learn that it's not just putting the bacteria in it's actually what happens when the bacteria then digests and then creates new compounds. Mm -hmm. So now we're being even more smart and interesting about prebiotics and probiotics. And we're thinking, 
yes, prebiotics, what's the food for the bacteria? And also what does that bacteria produce and what benefit does that have? So I love this like indirect cool way that we're going right. and I'm getting less and less excited about probiotics and more and more excited about prebiotics and postbiotics. post-biotics. There's an amazing uh, closing tradition that I bring you onto the podcast because I really feel that some of the guests like yourself have such incredible experience and insights and they're, you know, have gone through so much. So I came up with this closing tradition because I want to extract all the juice out of you guys. Please. What is the one lesson or learning to date that has been the most impactful and has carried with you throughout your journey? I love this. So I'm going to I'm going to reference a movie to explain my answer. Do you I'm a Harry Potter person. By the way, I love Harry Potter. Are you, <laughs> I'm I'm leaving speaking my love language. So in the third movie and third We've book. Hands. Exactly. So in the third movie and book. Harry is watching himself be killed by dementors and he's waiting for his dad to come and he says he's talking to Hermione and he says he's I'm wait, I'm waiting for him to come he's going to come Hermione and Hermione looks at him and he says she says no one's coming Harry how I feel yeah. about our health is like the cavalry is ourselves. So Harry had to set himself free and save his own life because he realized no one's coming. That's how I feel about our health. We need people. It's not even a question. But at the end of the day, if you make a choice to save yourself, you will be able to do it. So that is the answer. There is no cavalry. You are the cavalry and you can do so much more than you can ever imagine. Michelle Shapiro, where have you been my whole life? I know. It's so where horrible. I hated living been? here without you. I've hated it here. It's Mike terrible. Mike Drop, what a beautiful, beautiful Thank thing to leave everybody with. How incredible. I think people are lucky to be in practice with you. You're clearly empowering your patients and clients and you're helping them live healthier, happier lives and taking control of their mental health. And I want to say I'm helping them to do it themselves because I don't get any of the credit for the work that they do. And when any practitioner is working with someone and they're able to put that mirror up and say, look at you, I think that's the most impactful part of a health journey, honestly. Amazing. Thank you so much. I can't wait to bring you on again. I can't wait to. We too. need to do a round two. We're going to ask all the guests listening to this to comment below and leave, you know, their insights, what they loved, what they've learned, and what they want to hear more of. I can't wait. Mm -hmm.